welcome all uh, welcome to financial freedom my name is samir bapat and uh, today is uh, day 12 of our uh, complete course on stock market so once again welcome now today what we are going to learn is the first indicator of stock market by western world so known indicator from western world uh, we are going to learn this is the first indicator used by western world in stock market this was developed somewhere around 130 years ago sir 1900 something it was developed and used so we what we will do is we'll go through different phases of this indicator and understand what it means for us so uh, i'll first question is why a indicator is developed like you have been studying uh, basic price movement till now you have seen candlestick uh, line chart and also why do you think a uh, indicator was developed so you can unmute i'll allow you to unmute also so if you want you can unmute and answer uh, sagar says for analysis yes for analysis what else to predict yes to predict but that you can do with the price action also right if the price action is there if you understand price action you can predict from the price action also to back test yes to back test something uh, whether it was it has happened or not easy to predict so uh, this is also right answer easy to predict for taking decisions to trade yes so what happens is absolutely right so what happens is people uh, see the price action and many times they want something very comfortable that okay theek hai yaar bata do humko kab kya karna hai when we should take a trade when we should enter when we should exit please define a better uh, easier uh, criteria to enter and exit so for that a indicator is developed so that is a primary function of indicator it indicates that okay what is likely to happen it predicts the higher probability uh, a, no indicator is perfect so you have to always remember that uh, indicator will give you profit it will give you loss only thing is we have to use a indicator which will give more profit than loss next question is which data is used by an indicator what data is used by indicator when the indicator is uh, developed or it is uh, formed uh, what data it uses no nsc to bahut general ho gaya it will not take everything from nsc it takes the past data of that price action right open high low close of the same like we have seen the candlestick pattern same way uh, any indicator whichever is developed koi kahi bahar se data nahi layega it will not bring data from outside it only takes the past data of the same stock based on the past data it will do some mathematical analysis and it will give us a indicator so it is always dependent on the past data so many times lot of the indicators are called lagging indicators why lagging indicators because they are since they are dependent on the data of the past uh, they take time to adjust to the reality current reality so that's why they are called lagging indicators we'll come to that point uh, many people who are uh, beginners they might be thinking yaar ye chal kya raha hai matlab so i'll come to that point what is the basic principle of a indicator so this is very very important point what is the basic principle of indicator anyone any guess what is the basic principle of a indicator developing a indicator what is the basic principle to give an entry and exit points yes but manan if i ask you to develop a indicator what Uh, what will be your starting point right pattern is okay okay so i think my question is not clear see basic principle of any indicator is the market repeats itself the person who must have created indicator he must have observed that same thing repeats again and again in the market right like we were discussing for the candlestick candlesticks were developed 400 years ago 
So the market is same, the behavior is same, it repeats again and again. That's why candlesticks are still valid today also. Same way any indicator is developed based on the repetition of something which occurs, which the creator of indicator must have seen and seen ki yaar ye to repeat hota rata hai. So if I develop this indicator, it will behave this way and it will try to capture the repetition what is happening in the market. Clear? Clear to everyone? Yes, no? Till now, so far so good? Okay. Now, this is very important. Okay, so this, uh, what I am going to share with you, uh, no book or class will tell you to analyze this thing. Okay, so whenever you are learning about an indicator, right now, I, we might be having a lot of enthusiasm. So many people might be having a lot of curiosity about what we are going to learn, which I'll be addressing in much time, in just few minutes. But before that, I would like you to learn this principle about any indicator you should be doing this analysis about the indicator if you want to really use that indicator in a correct way. So these are few points. Please keep them in mind. First is whenever you learn an indicator, try to learn the history of the indicator, when it was developed, why it was developed, what was the context, what was the conditions uh, prevailing uh, in those days when this indicator was developed. Why it was developed? What was the need of the author or the creator to develop this indicator? What are the inputs to the indicator? How was the developer? How the developer wanted to it to use it? Like we'll have uh, moving averages, we'll have RSI, we'll have MACD. So we need to understand try to understand how the developer wanted us to use the indicator because many times it gets lost in the uh, transfer of the knowledge under what conditions indicator will give profit and what conditions it will give losses and how to avoid those losses so this is the uh, things which we should be taking care of so uh, let's start with uh, this basic understanding of average. So we are going to learn about moving average, simple moving average indicator uh, today, which is the first indicator which was developed 130 years ago. Now, uh, how many of you know how to calculate average? Let's say for example, If I say, let's say if I have 10 digits, okay, so let's say 3, 5, 13, 15, let's say 19, 23, 21, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10, right? Either we get 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Now you have 10 uh, numbers here. Okay. How would you calculate the average of these numbers? Total divided by 10. Correct. Sum of total. Uh, you will add all this divided by 10. Correct. Everyone agrees. Everyone is with me. Isko Hindi mein repeat kar deta hon. Iska average kaise nikalenge? Yes. Agar mujhe iska average nikalna hai, to main average kaise nikalunga iska? Right. So, sabko add karenge, divided by 10 kar denge. Thik hai? Very easy. Yes? Okay. Now, here, How will you calculate average of 10 days closing price? Let's say if I have closing price, price uh, we have uh, 
every day let's say hdfc bank if you have hdfc bank you will have at the 330 you will have you will get the closing price so if i want to calculate the average of uh, 10 days average closing price of hdfc then uh, everyone agrees that i'll take the closing price of all 10 days divided by 10 i'll get the average of 10 days closing price yes agreed कोई एम्बिग्युटी तो नहीं है उसमें ओके नाउ हाउ विल यू कैलकुलेट एवरेज ऑफ 200 डेज क्लोजिंग प्राइस एंड यू हैव टू कीप ऑन कैलकुलेटिंग राइट इट इज नॉट वन डे जॉब यू हैव टू कीप ऑन कैलकुलेटिंग सो क्वेश्चन इज हाउ विल यू कैलकुलेट एवरेज ऑफ 200 days closing price subject to you don't have telephone to call someone and hire someone you don't have telephone you don't have mobile you don't have calculator you don't have computers how would you do it any ideas Add the closing point and divided by 200, right? Correct? Add 200 number. So you will, how many of you will agree that you will have to write all 200 days? So see, imagine you have to wait for 200 days. You have to note down all the closing prices to, you have to note down all 200 days prices it's almost a year right you have weekend in between then let's say every six days is the working day so you have to wait out almost for full year note down everything and then divide then you start getting the average correct graphical interpretation will not get those days right so now <laughs> so gauri uh, i am now gauri is saying i think it's readily available on google bsc okay now, okay, so I want you to imagine 130 years ago when people did not had mobile, they did not had calculators, they did not had computers to note it down so easily and to divide patapat patapat, they had to literally manually maintain all the records. This indicator was developed that time. Why I'm taking you historically, right? So can you imagine how difficult it was to uh, calculate, keep the calculation? How many of you can feel the passion they must be having to maintain the records manually, to calculate it manually at the end of the day and then use it for analysis? Right. <clears throat> now, very few, right? But they used to do it. Uh, why I'm taking you to that era is I'll tell you why. Now, if, if you have to maintain an average of one, just I'm taking some hypothetical number, 156 days. Now, if you don't have any calculator, computer, anything, is it easier to calculate 200 days moving, 200 days average or 156 days average? If you have to add everything and divide by 200, it is easier to divide by 200 or 156? What do you think? 200, right? So now, why I'm stressing this point here is this indicator were developed that time when nothing was there, they had to do manually. That is point number one. Point number two, when you are doing manually and maintaining manually, something division by dividing by 200, dividing by 100, dividing by 50, it is easier, right? How many of you agree that? If you are dividing anything by 200 or if you are dividing anything by 100 or if you are dividing by 50, 
it is relatively easier than any other numbers. Right? Correct? Agreed? Now, why I am stressing so much? Why I am stressing on this point so much? See, in one year, how many days are there? 365 days, right? 365 days, if you remove, uh, let's say, those days, I think six working days were there or five working days. There. I'm not, let's consider five working days. So, if you say 100 days are gone. So, working days are around 260 working days are there. Correct? So let's say, give and take some 10, 20 holidays and all here and there. So, uh, 260 minus uh, 10, 20 holidays, around 250 or let's say roughly 240 working days are there, correct? Agreed? In a year, there are around 240 working days. If you want to develop, if you want to take a view, yearly view, you can accurately take, okay, I'll divide by 240. But if you are doing any everything manually, you will say, okay, I'll take average of 200. So it will tell me what is the average of 200 days. So 200 days represents a complete year. Data of a year, almost roughly for a year. So they took 200. calculate So if I want to have some view about complete year data, I'll take it as a 200 day moving average. Same way for the half year, they took 100 days. 100 days moving average ले लेंगे उसके हिसाब से एक रिफरेंस निकाल के चलेंगे कि व्हाट हैपेंस सो दे टुक 100 डेज मूविंग एवरेज एंड फॉर अ क्वार्टर दे टुक 50 डेज मूविंग एवरेज सो इफ वी सी रिवर्स इन अ क्वार्टर रफली द नंबर ऑफ डेज कम्स टू 60 बट टू हैव अ जजमेंट अबाउट क्वार्टर दे टुक 50 50 डेज ऑफ कैलकुलेशन in half year, maybe 120, 130 days were coming, but they said, no, 100, le le te, 100 days moving average, le le te, hai. rough cut, it is okay, it, it is workable. For a year, they took 200 days of average, so they said, no, yearly data, uh, so why I am telling you all this history and I uh, went, took you 130 days behind is, this moving averages, number of days were meant from the perspective of ease of calculation also, because they had to do manually, it was developed by ease of calculation also. They wanted to calculate it easily. That's why they took 200, 150, served the purpose. Clear? Everyone is clear why, why 200 is used, why 100 is used, why 50 is used. Any questions so far? No questions? Okay. Now, <clears throat> so now let's see what is the simple moving average uh, on the graph. Uh, this we have covered, this when it was developed, blah, 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 we have covered. So now let's see straight away on the chart what it looks like. Okay, let's say HDFC Bank. <clears throat> okay, now let's go to indicators. Now we'll start with 200, okay? So you have to type moving average. We have simple move SMO. Let, let me type SMO. Moving average simple. You have to select moving average simple. Then let's go here. By default setting is nine days. You have to go to input. Let's start with 200 days. Style, let's color it uh, green because it is the huge biggest uh, moving average so let's uh, increase the width i'll make it more thick if you want me to okay so that the visibility on mobile is also good this is the moving average so for every day like if you see here 
Okay. Now, if you see here, this is the moving average. So for this day, the closing price of 200 days will be calculated. This point will be calculated and so far so good. So this is the line which now by God's grace, it is available on a flash of second. Uh, it is there. So the, the chart charting software is plotting it for us. We don't have to note down all the data and calculate and everything. Now it, it's calculating and giving it to us instantaneously. Fine. Now, how to... Okay. Now, how to trade? Mudde ki baat to hai na ki how to trade. Now, the <coughs> method to trade to moving average is... So I'll show you the good part and the uh, not so good part about moving average. See, if we go to or <clears throat> Okay, the how to trade any moving average, okay? So pay attention to trade a moving average. We have to wait for the crossover crossover. What crossover means that the price crosses above the okay. Uh, Aditya, I'll come to you in a second. So let me continue with what I'm, I'm telling. So I'll come back to you again. Okay. So now the crossover, what we have to do is we have to buy when the price crosses above the 200 day moving average. I'm just teaching you a technique. So one disclaimer I'm having is don't go and use moving average as an indicator. Since this is the first indicator, how they would have envisaged 130 years ago, they were not very much into technical analysis and trading, swing trading and all came only 50 years ago. This we are trying to understand from their perspective, how they were thinking, right? So don't trade based on this, what I'm telling, understand how this moving averages are being used to trade nowadays. But right now, it is still not a very good indicator or very powerful indicator to trade. Okay. Everyone is clear on that point. Understand what is an indicator, how to trade the starting point of an indicator. And then we'll have much better indicators going forward. Okay. So how do we trade? Uh, you can try it out on a paper. You can try it out and then uh, see. So what happens is whenever the simplest trading plan is the price closes above the green line. Here, this is the green line. Price has closed above it. Everyone okay? Yes? No. Now, let's say we have purchased at this point. So this is our cross and uh, this is the point where we are bought it. Now let me, okay. Now when we should sell, when the price will close below the 200 day moving average. So let's say I'll just remove it because we'll have to see. Okay. Now if I go back, where were we? Okay, so we were here, we made our that cross here, it went above this line here and all the way it remained above the 200 day moving average. So this is the 200 day moving average. This is the price which is moving. It kept, kept on going above the 200. It came here, it touched, it bounced from here and finally it closed below the 200 day moving average and closed here. So following this technique, we would have purchased at 330. 
and sold at 509. So this is how uh, the moving averages were used when the technical analysis started. So far so good, everyone okay? But why candles survey? Sagar, you are joining for the first time in this class? Okay. So you should see from uh, day 1 to day 11. So you can, I, I have uploaded the playlist from day 1 to day 11. So I have explained a lot of things from day 1 to day 11. So you can learn. Today you enjoy whatever you can understand. Okay. Fine. Okay, so this is how it uh, it will will be able to learn. This is the advantage. So you are able to take like almost from three hundred to three thirty to five hundred nine, almost seventy eighty percent of up move uh, with the help of this moving average. Easy, right? How many of you think this is okay? See, uh, Mahajub uh, is asking, uh, Mahajub, right? I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Mahajub, uh, okay, Mahajub is asking, what is the logic to focus here if the price go along the averages to buy or sell? See, the focus here is we should buy when the price crosses above the moving average. Now, the focus here is that, okay, we want to know uh, let me take uh, another example to explain the focus. Uh, uh, let's take Reliance. I hope I'll get some. Mm -hmm. ah, see here okay now here what happens is Ah, this is a good example. Okay. See, here what happens is, so the question is ki why we are using this 200-day moving average, right? What is the purpose? What is the purpose behind it? What we are looking at uh, at this point? See, what we are looking at is when to enter. So the basic question what we are asking with any indicator is ki bhai main enter kab karu? when is the point I should buy and stay away. So now this is a very good example when the price is going down, right? When in, in 2022 when the price went down and it closed below the moving average. 200 day moving average that means the average moving price of 200 days it closed down it showed the weakness so what it tells us ki abhi the price is weak stay away okay i am ready to stay away but till what point should i stay away i should be staying away till it closes above the 200 day moving average again so what happens is once it closes below here i stay away from this uh, stock, even if the stock might be good, fundamentally good, when it is coming down, I stay all the time from here to here when it is closing above, I stay away. So what happens is almost by making sure that, okay, I'm following this indicator and I'm respecting this line that, okay, whenever the price is below this line, I will not invest Am I able to stay clear of a drop from almost 377 till 255? Yes, because I would have not purchased here. Nowhere it went above the green line. 
So I would have stayed away from this. As soon as it started going up, then I bought. So was I able to stay clear of if there was no this line, no line to guide ki yaar ye turn around kab hoga, when this price is likely to start going up, I would be confused, right? I would be confused ki mai yaha buy karu ya yaha buy karu, where should I buy? Now, this 200 day moving average line gives me a quite a decent guideline that okay, whenever the price crosses above it, I should buy. So, the objective is of this line is to give us more clarity to uh, when the stock is turning around and when it is likely to go up, we start entering into that stock at that time. Clear? Clear to everyone? The objective of this line. Right? Clear? Okay. Now, once we enter, once it crosses above 50-day moving average, once we enter here at this level, then when should I exit? Should I exit after 10%, 20%, 30%? No, you can be in the trade as long as it is above the 200-day moving average. So we stay, we, we can still stay. So what will happen is I would have entered on 255. It is at 640. I would not be afraid. See, I, last week, last class we were uh, discussing, right? It is very, very difficult to hold the profit also. People get afraid after 10%, 20%, 30% profit also. Here by following <clears throat> the moving average, you would see that we were away from the stock till it started crossing this line. Once it crossed here, we would have entered we would have had a loss again, small loss. Again, it would have gone up. We would have purchased here, purchased at 251 and just following by this green line that, okay, as long as it is above the 200 day moving average, I will not exit. I would be, I would still be holding the stock at 640. So this gives us some guideline that, okay, the price is showing strength. It is still going up. Hold on to the price. Clear? Everyone clear? The principle behind using the moving average and how it is used? Yes. <clears throat> now, I will show you some surprising. So, what is the key, key uh, thing to use behind key principles using behind this moving average? Okay. The key principles behind using this moving average, if you want to use moving average, see, we since we understood the history, right? This chart was developed 130 years ago when people used to see fundamental analysis more than technical analysis. Technical analysis, swing trading and all are only 50, 60 years old. So those people were looking more of fundamentals, less of technical to give us an indication. So what does it mean? If I want to use a uh, moving average, then what should be my criteria? The criteria for me to use the moving average is I have to select a fundamentally good stock, momentum stock with all ROCE, ROE. ROCE we have covered earlier, ROE we have covered profit growth, sales growth greater than 15%. Okay, so how do I get that? I have screener, I have a lot of tools now. So let's see whether it, then after I get that, what should I do? Then it is simple. Once you select that fundamentally good stock, then buy when the price closes about 200 day moving average. Stop loss is exit when the price closes below the moving average. There is no target. As long as it is above the moving average, you stay put, you stay in the stock as long as it is above. So let's see whether it works out or not uh, in the current market scenario. So let's go to the screener. Screener, as you all know, it helps us in screening. So let me create a new screen for in front of you. So let's say ROCE, return on capital employed greater than 15 and ROCE for three years greater than 15 and I'm just putting all the conditions. Okay, so what I wrote there, return on equity greater than 15 and ROE three years 
greater than 15 and sales growth greater than 15 and sales growth. I'm taking three years because it should be a consistent three years uh, performance of any company uh, which will give us a good indication sales growth or profit growth. Greater than 15 and profit growth three years greater than 15. So how many, what all companies we get. So these are all companies with a 15% growth rate for last two to three years and for the last year also. One more thing we have to do, we have to put a market capitalization and market capitalization. We want a big, uh, we don't want a company worth some uh, 50, 100 crore rupees. We want uh, market capitalization. That means the company should be worth more than 1000 crore. So let's run this query. So we have few 141 results, right? Now let's see how this company, so these companies are growth stock, they are moving up, right? Filtration criteria, we have kept for three years also, right? Three years, uh, they were growing for last three years, they are growing for 50% and more compounded. So this is, so let's see case of India, how it would have reacted to 200 day moving average. So this is the company name as it is there in front of you, K Solves India. Okay, so let's see KSOL, KSOLs India. <clears throat> see, see how many days if we would have followed this system and we would have known this system, we would have entered here, right here, 351, and it would have allowed us to almost ride 300%. Agreed? From here to here, for one, one and a half years, it would have allowed us to ride the wave. See here, if you see this cross here, as per the trigger, it showed strength here. If we enter 349, <coughs> it stayed above the 200 day moving average, giving us courage to hold on to the stock. It went up and then Finally closed at 1047, almost three times. It gave a growth and closed. Let's take one more uh, result. Second, uh, which is this basic, like, I don't know what company it is, but let's try it out. Basic Flash Studio, okay. Okay, this is recently added company, Sahana Systems. So, okay, let's see Vare Renewable, how it would have fared. Okay, you see Vare Renewable, when did it cross the 200 day moving average? somewhere here when it was 60 in 2022 it crossed above the 200 day moving average if someone was analyzing this company that time and also used 200 day moving average to hold it it crossed above and it is you are still holding the stock it has still not crossed below so it is from 60 it has gone to 11532 by following this single system and this single system, you would get courage to hold on to 60 to 59. Right? Agreed? Yes, no. But the main ingredient is growth stock. It will not work on any stock. 
Okay, if you go and start applying on any stock which is not a momentum stock, which is not having year over year solid growth, then what will happen is it will have whipsaws. Okay, the, it will start having whipsaws. Let's see how IRDA would have performed. IRDA is also a good company. What happened? Oh, it has not listed for 200 days. Is it? Okay. JSL is also there. Okay. Okay, JSL is anyway growth company. Let's take HDFC Bank and I'll try to show my point. See, where do you lose when you are using 50-day moving average? Where do you lose is when the price starts whipsawing. This is called whipsawing, going up and down of this moving average. So what will happen is if it goes down, you exit. When it goes up, you enter. Again, after a few days, it goes down, you exit. Again, you enter, exit, enter, exit. So you are doing entry, exit, entry, exit. Because the price is fluctuating, whipsawing across the moving average. This is when you lose uh, your money in moving averages. So how this can be avoided? You have to use another indicators as well. This is a basic indicator to understand how to use an indicator. You have to use another indicators to avoid this whipsaw. Fine. So the smaller version of this SMA is we can have 100 day moving average and all. So today we will close our session at 200 day moving average, 50 and 100. We will see in the next session, we'll combine 50, 100 and 200 or maybe the smaller versions and see how we'll develop a trading system on Monday. Fine. So, uh, any questions on whatever we have covered today? Anything on uh, moving average? Anything how to use it? Uh, or any understanding on that? All good? Okay, great. So, thank you so much for joining on a Friday evening. Especially when uh, Olympics are going on and matches are going on. Still, you... Uh, join today. We'll see which uh, moving average to use on Monday out of 50, 100 and 200, which is more preferable and how to use for our requirements uh, on Monday. So great. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. See you on Monday, 9.30 p.m. Yes, I will upload the uh, recordings.